It's taken me years to assemble this beautiful space, and if you've watched my videos, the one theme you might notice is that my setup is constantly changing. Different desks, different lighting, different gear, and I finally found a happy balance of what I consider to be the best of each component, making my home office dream setup finally a reality. For your convenience, I'm putting a link to every single piece of gear I'm going to talk about in the description below. Using those links greatly helps to support my channel so I can create more content like this. Now let's start off with the foundation of my setup, and that is this beautiful black walnut 72 inch by 30 human centric workflow height adjustable electric desk. Now I've had so many desks in the past that are typically wrapped with a vinyl covering to give it its aesthetic while the workflow desk is made of an actual solid wood butcher block and the difference is night and day. It's glossy, doesn't scratch easily, is a beast on the scale and just feels premium. And unlike the other bulky controllers that hang off the front of most electric desks, this one has it built into the desktop giving it a minimalistic design. Now I've had a gazillion desks and I finally have one that I don't see myself upgrading from. Also from human centric is this walnut desk shelf. And while it's not solid wood like the desk, it's a nice add on that complements the desk well, gives me plenty of space as a second tier at about 46 inches wide. And when I'm not using a monitor arm, sits my monitor at the perfect height, which helps me avoid neck string. It's got a pull out drawer for storage, which also provides a second mini tier, which I use to store my iPad. The desk and shelf together make a solid combo. There's no more upgrading once you've got a solid wood desk. But what good is a beautiful desk if you're not comfortable sitting in front of it? And that's why I sit in the best gaming chair I've ever sat in, the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022. Now I have the soft weave version in Arctic white. And if you're wondering why my chair is black, that's because I have a Secret Lab skin over my chair to match my current aesthetic. Not only can I switch out skins when I want, but thanks to its magnetic ecosystem, I can swap out armrest and that's why I'm using their plush cell armrest over the standard because the soft velvety feel combined with the soft weave fabric is a match made in gaming chair heaven. Now I've tested a lot of gaming chairs and office chairs on my channel and there's a reason I stick to the Secret Labs Titan for my daily use. As a photographer and content creator, one of the most important factors to consider is color accuracy. And that's why when it comes to my monitor, I went straight to the top and chose the cream of the BenQ crop, the SW321C. At 32 inches, this 4K beast of a monitor has color gamuts of 100% sRGB, 95% P3, and 99% Adobe RGB. It's HDR10 and HLG compatible, is Pantone and Kalman certified for accuracy, and has something no other monitor I've owned has, hardware calibration. When it's time to take your hobby and make it a career, the SW321C will help you get there. Now I have it attached to a monitor arm mount to keep it floating, which keeps the weight off my desk shelf. Sitting on top of the monitor is my BenQ Screen Bar Halo light bar. Now sure, there's plenty of light bars on Amazon for cheaper, but since I had the BenQ monitor, I thought it just made sense to stick with the brand. And unlike most light bars, this one also has a light on the back for ambiance. You can adjust brightness and color temperature, select whether you want the front or back light on or both, and power the unit down with this sleek controller knob. And when it comes to my audio, because I have a background in music and home studio recording, I wanted the best quality possible, so I chose the Audient ID24 audio interface as my hub. Now, unless you want to spend over $1,000, this interface is going to deliver some of the best performing components, including converters and preamps. And because it's desktop oriented, it fits perfectly in my setup. Now, the great thing about this interface is that you can bypass the preamps in case you want to get outboard gear, which takes us to my next piece. The AMS Neve 1073 SPX preamp and EQ is by far one of the biggest secret weapons when it comes to vocals. Not only can you EQ your signal to perfection, but you can drive the preamp and get that Neve sound all the other companies out there emulate. You can settle for a clone or you can get a unit with the Neve name stepped on the front. 
The final piece of my vocal chain combo is my Neumann TLM 49 condenser microphone, which is a beast not only performance wise, but it's actually got some pretty good weight, so make sure you have a heavy duty stand capable of holding it. Now I use the Warm Audio WAMBA boom arm, which keeps it in place with no problem, with the pop filter in the front, so vocals come in warm and full of life with no pops or plosives. I chose the TLM49 because after years of recording with different mics, I found this one suits me the best. You'll have to find what works for you. I've owned a lot of studio monitors over the years, and if there were a single pair I'd recommend under $1,000, no contest, I'd choose the Focal Alpha 65 Evos, but if you've got the budget, I highly recommend these Atom Audio A7Vs. These that blow me away in terms of the 3D image they create, they're clear and crisp, and just deliver a pro sound that absolutely makes them worth the money. They've got room adjustment settings on the back so you can tailor your sound to your environment, and you can rotate the front tweeter so you can place them sideways if you prefer. Now, if you like to have them on your desk like I do, it's important that you use proper stands to keep the bass from traveling down your desk, and no stand is better than these ISO acoustics which can be tilted at certain angles so your speakers correctly face your ears. Everything is plugged in and powered by a pair of Furman PL8C power conditioners I have on the floor to help clean the dirty power, which might come through and lead to hums or feedback issues. At some point, I plan to get a rack mount interface, and when that happens, I'll add a rack space to the top of my desk to replace this shelf and finally get these power conditioners off the floor. Now you might think the fancy microphone or expensive speakers are the most important part of my home studio, and you'd be wrong. Without a doubt, the biggest, most important pieces are going to be these GIK acoustic panel bass traps I have all over my walls. They help eliminate slap echo and reflections and help to tame bass. It doesn't matter how good your speakers are, if your room isn't treated, it's not going to sound very good. Now remember, I have links for everything I'm talking about in the description below to make it easy to find, including where to get these bass traps, so if you want to build a similar setup, be sure to like this video or save it to your playlist so you can come back later. Sitting under the left side of my desk shelf is my Apple M1 Mac Mini 16GB, and while there are new updated M2 Pro Mac Minis out, if you've got the M1 with 16GB, there's really no need to upgrade at this point. It handles all my Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere 4K video projects with no hiccups. It's sitting on a Satechi Thunderbolt hub, which I highly recommend to have all the connectivity you need. Now, I use the Logitech G915 Lightspeed Wireless Mechanical Clicky Keyboard paired with my G502 Lightspeed Wireless Mouse, which sit on a wool-like desk pad I bought from MinimalDeskSetups.com, which matches perfectly with my darker panels and gives my desk a professional look. Oh, and I can't forget my plants. How long will they survive, and do I have the green thumb? Only time will tell, but I have two golden pothos on each speaker, which need time to grow, a money tree, and a few succulents to bring the whole setup together. Something that I always get asked about, I mean anytime I post a pic on social media, is where did I get my rug? This giant 9x12 Versace style rug is definitely a head turner and really gives the room an upscale vibe. I'll absolutely post that link. Next is my bookshelf, which is made up of a metal frame with walnut shelves to match my desk, and much like my rug, helps to give the whole room an upscale feel. Because of its metal frame, I'm able to attach magnetic lights for ambiance and this magnetic headphone holder from Secret Lab and use the shelf to house all of my important day-to-day -day things like lenses I frequently swap out, batteries, chargers, you get the idea. But probably the most important thing I keep here besides my giant size lifelike Thanos, which reminds me every day that everything I've accomplished can be gone in a snap, is my Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl 52 Champions mini helmet and case. Fly, Eagles, fly. And finally, to bring it all together, I have a variety of Philips Hue and Aperture lights, which help set the mood when I'm working on video. Now, I have a Philips Hue light strip on the back of my desk, a Philips Hue gradient lamp on my shelf, and a Philips Hue light bar along the back corner of the room. I've got a Nanlite tube light on the top shelf of my bookshelf and two Aperture RGB lights, one over Thanos and one over my Eagles helmet, which help create an atmosphere you can absolutely work or play in.
There are a few things I didn't talk about, mostly my camera gear and lighting gear, everything I use to create YouTube videos. So if you'd like me to make that video, let me know in the comments below and I'll make it happen. Now that wraps up today's video. So if you made it this far, super kudos to you for the engagement. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see what's coming next. Until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned and have a great rest of your day.